All right, more on Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel in Think Tech. And today we're going to talk to Derek Turbin on Community Matters. He is running for office. We want to see people running for office. Um, welcome to the show, Derek. Nice to have you on. Uh, good to see you, Jay. Thanks for having me. So uh, what, are you, what district are you running for? This is a state house, District 20. What is that? Correct. Yeah, District 20. So it breaks down to uh, Palolo Valley in the middle. And then you have Wilhelmina Rise, uh, Manalani Heights on one side. Other side, you have St. Louis Heights. And then you have Kaima Key, uh, everything Malka of the H1 Freeway. That's a big district, or at least it has a lot of neighborhoods in it anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it's fun. Big hills, uh, big valley, and a lot of a lot of good restaurants and good places to eat. Yeah, yeah, which used to be open. And what about walking? Can you walk? Can you say hi? Can you knock on doors, or is that out of out of bounds now? Yeah, I, I suspended that. Um, you know, about three or four weeks ago. Um, yeah. So right now, it's kind of a digital campaign. Um, social media, emails, sending out a few mailers, um, making phone calls, but. Fortunately, can't go door to door, and due to the shelter in place, can't can't sign wave either. I was doing that for about okay. a week. Um, so, uh, t give us a little <laughs> idea about uh, your background. Who are you? Where did you come from? What are you doing in your in your regular life, your normal life, so to speak? Um, yeah. yeah. Tell us who you are, Derek. So yeah, I'm born and raised here. Um, grew up down the street uh, from my district in the Wailaikahala area. Went to Punahou. Um, Graduated after I graduated from Puno, went to college at Occidental. Uh, that's where our President Obama went for two years before transferring. Um, was an athlete at Occidental, played uh, football and ran track there. Following Occidental, came back, taught at St. Louis um, for a little bit, St. Louis High School, and then uh, proceeded to coach track at Occidental, then uh, moved on to law school. and. Practiced law in LA for about five years before moving home, and now I've been uh, practicing here in Hawaii for about about two years. Hmm, that's a good period of time to you know have to get it under your belt and see what the uh, see what it's like. So you come from a family of lawyers. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. So both my parents, uh, Rich Turbin, is an attorney. Um, so is Ray Saint Chu. I feel like probably both of them have been on the show a few times. And, you know, I, if I didn't say, if I said that they didn't somewhat inspire me to go into law, I'd be lying. Because I do re recall, um, you know, growing up at the dinner table, uh, both parents, you know, talking about their cases, talking about law, which kind of planted the seed, planted the seed in my head at a pretty young age. Mm, okay, very important. We want to see young people run for office. But before we go any further, I want to see your images, your graphics. Uh, so can we spin through them? Uh, can the maestro please put some on the, on the screen for us? There it is. That's your logo, eh? Yes, yes, that's my logo. What else we got? That's it? No other graphics. Okay. So let's talk about how you, how you perform you know, a campaign, how you organize a campaign. Mm -hmm. You have to have staff, you have to have co-chairs and, you know, all kinds of people that help you and advise you yeah. and make you, make you wise uh, on, on, the, on the, you know, the issues and difficulties of running for office in this state, protect you against hit pieces and all those things. Um, so oh, what have yeah. you done to establish your brain, your brain trust? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great, great, Great question. So starting around is around January when, you know, really kind of it came up in my heart that I want to run, run for this seat. And, you know, first thing I did is, you know, talk to my family and talk to my friends. And, and the funny thing is, I think I was doing a lot of having a lot of those conversations, reaching out to these people to really get that support I needed that 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 moral support, that encouragement that I needed to know that this is something that I wanted to do. So reached out to a few of my closest friends, um, you know, either from Punahou or just kind of growing up here. Um, and, you know, those close friends kind of formed my team of co-chairs, uh, just kind of go through them. My good friend, uh, Rossi Sokane, 
he's he's my chair. Um, and then I have another one of my other best friends from Punahou named Jay Hanamura. He's also on my team. There's Todd Iacovelli, Kat Tashner, and my sister, uh, Laurel May Sink. Sink, those are my um, co-chairs who kind of really give me that, that encouragement, that moral support. I can also bounce ideas off of. And then I formed a team of honorary chairs. Those are people from kind of the older generation, more my parents' generation who provide me with the wisdom, the insight, and almost like a sense of calm um, as I continue to push forward through this campaign, um, one of my honorary co-chairs is I think your good friend Carol Mon Lee. She's um, she's an she's an auntie to me. We're not related by blood, but you know, just grew up as one of my aunts. Uh, on top of that, you got to take Chang care of her, Derek. She's very really important oh, yeah. to think tech. Okay, be nice yeah. to her, will you? Thank you. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. No, she's awesome, but yeah. She, she's actually the one who's really taking care of me. Like when I get stressed out, I call her and she gives me that nice sense of calm. Then another um, very sage, wise person, Walter Kiramitsu, former president of St. Louis and judge. Um, he actually, he hired me to teach at St. Louis, which was my first job out of college. Again, just a great mentor, great sense of calm. Um, then, you know, J.D. He's Nielsen. He's going to be on our show this week on, on Thursday on the 16th. Uh, he's oh, great. Going to be on our show, and he's going to talk about uh, the independent judiciary in our in our country. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. Try to come oh, around that, and watch that one. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. No, I'd love to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, judge. He was a judge and president of St. Louis. So, yeah, great guy. Yeah, and um, great community member. Great league leader in the legal com community, which makes him such a great asset to my campaign. And then uh, J. D. Nielsen, um, another. You know, very wise, experienced uh, person in the um, in the political community. Wor worked on a lot of campaigns, so really great to have her on my team. And then my last um, honorary chair is uh, Dr. Tom Kosasa, another very wise, solid community member to have. Mm -hmm. well, that's great. So with all these people and all these advisors calming you and you know, uh, sort of helping you, helping you understand the issues of our time and our, and our state. I want to ask you about your, your platform. And the first mm -hmm. question is, uh, you know, in general, Derek, what do you want to do? Uh, yes, you want to run, but why you want to run? Do you want to, how do you want to change things in Hawaii? How do you want to participate mm -hmm. in the political process? Yeah, no, the, the, another great question. Well, you know, initially kind of stepping in, one of the reasons why I wanted to run was really to just bring kind of practical solutions um, to the state. Um, I, I spent a little bit of time uh, looking at bills last session, and I, I, I had some ideas on, on ways to get things passed. You know, a um, lot of hot button bills that have, I think, got gotten a little bit stumped um, recently. You know, one of them was uh, the minimum wage bill, and I, I followed that bill kind of going through the legislature and I still, I see it get stumped because um, the small businesses are taking a big hit. So I, you know, I had some ideas on, you know, how to raise minimum wage, but also protect small businesses, you know, through some, some form of tax credits, taking um, some type of union approach um, to that process. But, you know, now with obviously what we're dealing with, with COVID-19, um, you know, my, my ideas and my message have changed. Like if, if I have the opportunity to serve and get in, I know that at the top of my priorities is how we're going to get this, uh, get our economy to recover post COVID-19. And, you know, some of the ideas that I had is we take a local approach to this bailout, uh, federal bailout package, which involves, you know, giving people who have been laid off um, a, a monthly stipend, uh, providing statewide, very low interest loans, even grants to some of these small businesses that have been hit hard. So, you know, that's, that's going to be, if I have the opportunity to serve, a big priority, figuring out how we're going to help our economy recover. And on top of that, really most importantly, how we're going to help the people in our state who have been hit hardest uh, by the shelter in place and by COVID-19. Yeah, you bet. Big issues, you know. You're, yeah, you're stepping. Yeah. You're stepping into a, a, a whirlwind of planning activity, 
and it's not clear uh, what we need to do yet. So mm -hmm. uh, if you're elected, you're going to have to face that because that's going to come up right after you take office and it's going to be a burden on everyone in the legislature. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me ask you about other issues, okay? COVID, of okay. course, is very important. Uh, but what about mm -hmm. the, the standard issues that, uh, you know, people in office always have to wrestle with? What about mm -hmm. homelessness? You got a feeling about that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've talked to a few people um, about the homeless issue. And my policy and my way of addressing that is through mental health care. I think one of the big issues that we see uh, with the homeless issue is, you know, the sweeps are happening the uh, homeless individuals are being asked to move. Um, oftentimes they get cited. They, for reasons we all understand, they, they don't show up to court, they don't pay their fines. Um, so they just move down the street and it turns into a giant game of kick the can. So uh, what a lot of people have been talking about, which I'm certainly behind, is putting them through a mental health care route. I, I've, I've worked with some of the homeless people in Thomas Square and to other, um, charity groups and what we need to do is a lot of the times when they get cited uh for these loitering violations is we assess where they are um with regards to mental health care and and put them through that mental health care pr process where, whether it's drug addiction alcohol addiction or just general mental health and then from there transition them to um to, to jobs in the society, in our community, so we can kind of tra tra uh, transition them, you know, off the streets into into a lot of these shelters, into a lot of these homes through that mental health care process. Yeah, jobs. You say jobs right now. You know, there are more people than there are jobs for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And when we start doing our recovery, we're going to really have to think hard about jobs. And yeah, um, yeah. we it, it all sounds like uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the New Deal, where we have yeah. to do public works, you know, the WPA and, and the yeah. like. Um, I mean, where, where will the jobs come from? Do you have an idea about that? Because I totally agree that we have to take mm -hmm. the homeless and put them in jobs. That's job number one. Uh, not a mm -hmm. or what. Uh, and, and so, but, you know, where do we find the jobs, especially in the duress of, of the coronavirus crisis? Yeah, well, yeah, and that's that's another great question. You know, one thing is that I've noticed um, through a lot of studies and talking to a lot of people is, frankly, our state offices are understaffed. Um, you know, just for example, um, you know, I, I hear that the DLNR is understaffed, uh, the Department of Human Services is understaffed, um, and you know, a lot of these other you know statewide departments are understaffed. So. I think kind of creating synergy there and really working with, um, you know, the the universities, the the, the colleges here, um, finding ways to kind of funnel, you know, recent grads into those positions, I think would be a really good way to utilize these open positions um, and, you know, find jobs for a lot of the people who are, who are unemployed. Um, you know, we mm -hmm. also work with you know, the, a lot of the veterans associations, um, the army veterans associations, cause there's always, you know, a struggle for, you know, finding them, finding jobs for them as well. So, so working with just creating more synergy between the state and our departments, our, our job course to, to, to funnel those workers into there. Yeah. Well, you, you raise a number of questions spinning in my head right now. I'll try to remember yeah. all the, you know, all the, all the, th the questions you, uh, you know, made me think about. Um, okay, so we have we have youth, we have new yeah. entries into the state uh, the state uh, employment system. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there are, there are problems about having too many employees yeah. in the state employment system, and not mm -hmm. enough money in the in the employment retirement system to cover their retirements as their retirements are presently constituted. These have been tug of war issues for you know decades. Um, so how how do you insinuate the new youthful vital um, you know members of state government into that and at the same time minimize bureaucracy because with increased state employee numbers comes increased bureaucracy and you and I both know that Hawaii has has an incredible amount of bureaucracy and uh, mm. as a as a member of the state legislature one of your missions would be has to be should be. 
um, you know, dealing with that bureaucracy and making it work better. So how do you do that? And how do you do that within the fiscal means of the state uh, where we have to balance the budget by way of the constitution? How, how do you fix all those factors and vectors all swimming, all swimming in your first term of office? Yeah, no, that, and that's a great question. And and I don't think there there's not necessarily an overnight fix. You know, we're not going to be able to, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to be able to, you know, snap our fingers and, and fix this overnight. You know, one thing I'll say is, you know, it's 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 almost like a twofold process when you talk to a lot of these uh, state departments and within the state of Hawaii, because um, the other issue that they have is they, they have an issue um, not only hiring employees but retaining employees. So, you know, one of my solutions to that would be obviously kind of you know funneling a lot of these uh, young. Uh, graduates looking for work into these departments in the state of Hawaii to give them a job and to fill these positions. And then my next solution for um, retaining them is almost taking that union approach that I previously discussed uh, to minimum wage, where, you know, you have an entry level minimum wage, which I I understand right now, it's, I believe, uh, $13.25. But then um, you kind of raise the minimum wage for these entry level workers um, after each year that they work. So, um, you know, make the minimum wage for an individual with one year of experience, $15. So there's that incentive for these young employees to, to stay there for a year because, you know, they're going to get paid more. And then, you know, once you reach that two to three year mark, make their um, minimum wage the the $17 an hour, which is what we're shooting for. So I think that definitely solves uh, one issue well, really two issues, filling the positions and retaining the employees. Let me ask Obviously, you one thing about that. When you, when you, when you have that incremental increase over mm-hmm. time, you know, seniority, is that seniority in the workforce or is that seniority in the company? In other words, do I, do I get a raise and does that stick when I change, change jobs, change companies? I, I, I think you'd, you'd have that um, in the company because, um, you know, that gives them the employee, the incentive to stay in the company and uh, work right. in the company for a long period of time. And it saves the company money because they don't have to do these job searches and retrain employees um, over and over again. It, it um, you know, kind of, it, it really is a win-win because they are in fact saving money by um, not doing these constant job searches and, and job trainings. Yeah, but, but and now one other thing is we live in a in a world which is migrating. We find you know the whole thing about uh, you know coronavirus uh, mm-hmm. and you know and the and, and the lockdown and, and it makes us look at our society differently. Mm-hmm. It makes us look yeah. maybe more carefully at the way we actually operate. And I guess politics and you know political metrics that that makes us look more carefully also. And one of the things that's come clear is that we have a nation largely composed, our workforce is largely composed of gig workers who move from job to job, who hold two, three jobs or more at the same time. We have that in Hawaii too. How would you deal with the minimum wage issue for gig workers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. Well, I I do think that like the union approach to minimum wage would would be the solution. I, I, I think you know, I, uh, yeah, I guess I, I understand that they're gig workers, but, you know, if we, we can give both the uh, worker an incentive to, to, for consistency to stay some, stay with an employer for a long period of time and also, you know, give these employers the, I guess, the ability to hang on to the, uh, the worker for a longer period of time, um, you know, that would hopefully solve some of the problems that we're dealing with, with, with gig Mm -hmm. workers. You know, I think the other thing that I'd like to bring up is I think there should be uh, an investment in STEM schools. Um, You know, I don't think we see enough uh, STEM programs here in Hawaii. um, And that involves educating our, our youth, our high school students on jobs like tech jobs, as well as data analytics jobs, because there's a huge demand for tech and data analytic jobs, even in Hawaii. 
And a lot of these companies are reaching out to the mainland to fill these positions. So if we can train our local um, students, our local youth for these uh, tech and and data analysis jobs, we'll see a lot more stability in the workforce here and a lot more opportunities for young people here to, you know, to make a good good living off of skilled labor. Yeah, that's an excellent point and an excellent position as far as I'm concerned. The state has been mm -hmm. trying for generations and many administrations to diversify mm -hmm. the economy. So we're not stuck with a mono economy in tourism, which is, yeah, um, you yeah. know, that, that's what's going to hurt us more than anything in the in the COVID crisis. We, oh, yeah, absolutely. we, we try to turn turn it on again. Um, yeah. We're dealing really with one single mono economy tourism. So mm -hmm. we've got we've got to diversify into tech. And and, and so, uh, you know, we've had lots of discussions and statutes that have come and gone allowing yeah. tax credits for tech. And I wonder what mm -hmm. your thoughts are, because this is a very important point going forward. Government has the power to incentivize the development of industries or yeah. the reverse. Um, what would you do? What is your feeling about a, a credit, a uh, tax credit, uh, some kind of tax incentive to encourage the development of that tech industry that you're talking about? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think if it's a local company, um, if it's a local company uh, here in Hawaii investing in tech, then I'm all for the tax uh, credit. I, I'm hesitant to offer the tax credit um, to, you know, a major mainland corporation. Like, you know, I'll just bring up, you know, there's the Amazon Whole Foods, there's, um, there's, you know, Facebook, there's Google, they all have, you know, somewhat of a presence here in Hawaii. So I'd be hesitant to offer the tax credits to them, but absolutely offering the tax credit to these local companies to invest in tech here, I think is a great idea. And, and you know, one idea that um, I've seen at the legislature that I've seen, you know, come up quite a bit uh, for Hawaii, for tech in Hawaii is investing in green energy and ocean cleanup. Uh, there are, there have been proposals for um, this, trying to explain it, try to think of how the best way to explain it, but kind of an ocean cleanup where they really kind of pick up trash pick up disposable waste in the ocean and create that into energy uh, and i think that you know that could be a phenomenal idea to to invest in here because you know strategically uh, hawaii being in the middle of the pacific ocean you know there is that you know it, it's it's very likely to be able to create energy off of the the ocean waste that we see around around Hawaii. So I you know that that's one kind of green tech energy that I could see people wanting to invest in here in Hawaii. Yeah, and you would see uh, tax credits as a way to incentivize that investment and that entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I I think there's the you know, I think there are companies, uh, you know, with money that would want to invest in something like that, because, you know, it's a win win. It's, um, you know, creates energy. It, it's kind of a great way to combat one of the biggest threats of my generation, which is climate change. So I, I think that is something that we could invest in. Let me ask you about a, a topic that's not often discussed, but, um, you know, mm -hmm. think that has followed it over the years. And that's the integration of the islands. Uh, in mm -hmm. other words, going from a, a state of islands to an island state, or maybe I, I should reverse that, an island state to a state of You know, the islands seem to be floating away from each other, call it mm -hmm. insular drift. I mean, we, we've, we've fought over um, putting a cable for uh, uh, electric power from Lanai to, uh, to Oahu, where one has the, the energy and the other one needs the energy. And then in mm -hmm. Oahu, we have this NIMBY process where nobody wants to see wind in their backyard and all that. Um, and so we, we really don't think as a state that is connected. We have one mm -hmm. airline that, that flies, but nobody else. Yeah. We don't have a ferry, which is really an extraordinary deficit for us not to have mm -hmm. a ferry. Um, and the, the, uh, you know, we somehow encourage the neighbor islands to develop their own personality and be separate, if not isolated from Oahu. Um, don't you think there are things we can do? I mean, what's your view of this? Can't we bring the islands closer together and make everybody work on the same page, uh, all the islands as one unified state? Do you have any thoughts about that? 
No, absolutely. I, I, you know, I think that's a great point. And I, I actually do think that, that what you brought up, bringing back some form of the, the super fairy would be a great way to, you know, bring a little bit of unity to the islands. Like as opposed to paying, you know, 150 to 200 dollars for a round trip to get, go from here and mount here to maui and back here to the big island and back you know let's let's make it simple and accessible um and make it something that you don't have to spend 200 dollars on and, and and plan weeks in advance so i i i think i think what you brought up the uh, the idea of the super ferry going from islands island to island making it easier to go back and forth is a great start, and and I think that is a I think that is a great solution. Um, you know, I work in the legal industry. I do uh, workers' comp. Have done a little bit of uh, personal injury uh, law too, and I know another gigantic issue uh, that we see between inner island issue is is access to quality medical care, quality doctors. You know, I I think some type of program. That they do with some dentists. Um, I have a friend who's a dentist who actually worked as a dentist with the Air Force. Now he spends um, two days a week uh, practicing on Maui and the rest of his time practicing on Oahu. And I think you know creating a program like that for medical workers, especially um, medical residents, would be a great way to solve some of this problem. You know, uh, have some of the resident uh, medical resident program spending three days on Oahu and two days on an outer island would really be a great way to kind of give to the outer islands, improve their medical health care, create a little more synergy there um, through the through health care, um, which is obviously a huge issue as well. So a couple ideas, those are a couple ideas I have to create the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. good for you. Good for you. Unity. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with having young people come into government. Uh, with Thanks. new ideas Thanks. and all that. You. So, okay, you're going to run. You are running. Um, you're going to mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, in the election in November. Uh, um, there'll be a lot that happens between now and then for sure uh, here in Hawaii and the world. Um, you're going to have the slings and arrows of being in an election in Hawaii. Nobody ever said it was easy. But I want oh, yeah. to offer you the opportunity in closing to tell the people out there, okay, mm -hmm. um, why you should be elected what message you want to leave with them, why you should be elected over anyone who runs against you. What okay. makes you special, Derek? Tell us. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, I, I guess I, it's going to be two, it's a twofold answer to your question. I, I'm really passionate about the community, about the area that I live in. You know, I grew up, you know, playing basketball in kind of a key gym. After basketball games, I'd walk up the street to Big City Diner, um, you know, Kimchi Chu, um, a lot of those restaurants up Wai Lai. Um, and, you know, they just, they have a special place in my heart, which will just bring me to um, one of the points I want to bring up. I have this little um, mailer I did with a lot of the local restaurants, encouraging people to support them, like Big City Diner, Kimchi Chu, Brood, Coffee Talk, Pipeline, Jose's, Champs, The Curb. Happy Days Chinese Food, North Shore Grinds, and The Surfing Pig. Wanted to give all of them a shout out because they've stayed open uh, during this shelter in place. They're serving takeout, they're feeding the community, feeding us. And I just wanna encourage people to continue to support them. If you have the opportunity um, and you live around District 20 near Wailai Avenue, order takeout, support these, uh, these small community restaurants, local restaurants that have stayed open during uh, this time, feeding us uh, during this stressful time. So, you know, that's that's my first point. I'm really passionate about District 20 and the small local establishments in District 20. And I want to continue to support District 20 um, if I have the opportunity to get into to office. Um, the next thing I want to bring up is just the analytical skills that I've developed throughout my years of practicing law here in Hawaii and in and, and in Southern California. You know, I've had the opportunity to talk to Jay about some of the ideas I have, some of the ways I want to think outside the box to really improve the state. And um, I want to bring that, I want to bring that to the legislature. I want to bring those analytical ideas and skills 
my ability to solve problems and think outside the box to the ledge to to make Hawaii a better place. All right. Uh, that's good. We're out of time. Derek Turbin running for office, running for the state house, District 20. Uh, take a look at his website, DerekTurbin.com, is it? Yes. All right. Yeah, DerekTurbin.com. All right. Familiarize yourself with Derek. Thank you so much, Derek. Aloha. Great. Thank you, Jay. Have a great day and stay safe.